The drama surrounding It Ends With Us is getting way worse as Blake Lively reacts strangely and accuses Justin Baldoni. Blake Lively has been reportedly doing what most fans of It Ends With Us fear most, romanticizing the subject by telling girls to wear their florals and see the movie. But that's not the worst. When directly asked about the sensitive subject, the actress gave a remarkably tone-deaf, ridiculous reply. This movie is gonna affect people and they're gonna wanna tell you about their lives. What's the best way for them to be able to talk to you about this? Like asking for like my address or my phone number or like my location share. Oh, I could just location share you and then we could... Uh... <laughs> In an attempt to sound funny and cool, Blake ended up giving a very disappointing answer about her character who suffers from DV, which doesn't make sense at all as many women look up to her, but she chose that moment to water everything down and Brandon Sklenar, who plays Atlas, couldn't stand the comment. A look at his face and you can tell he's so done and tired of having to be a part of this sham of a PR. It Ends With Us deals with a sensitive subject, which is DV, and there's been little to no awareness of that from Blake Lively. During many of the promotional tours that have raised genuine concerns from fans, Blake used her performance as a tool to promote her hair brand. As the hairstylist and fashion designer of the show, without excluding the other vital roles Blake filled on the set of It Ends With Us, the actress has continued to use the platform to promote her other businesses. The hair brand Blake Brown was launched around the same time It Ends With Us premiered. Also, fans noticed that her Instagram bio is linked to her businesses, while Justin Baldoni is the only person with his profile linked to getting help for DV. However, maybe the reason why Blake hasn't been very vocal about the sensitivity issue is because she wasn't paid for it. See, it's actually because we're always like, yeah, our movie's so good. Go it see is it. actually so You're good. like paid to do that. Not, they don't actually pay I you to promote the movie. I got paid to say it. They it's great. They don't pay you to promote the movie. They should. They pay you to be in the movie. Not, you know, whatever. As the film's producer, it's strange that she would even say that. Aside from that, the PR for It Ends With Us has been intertwined with Deadpool and Wolverine, which makes fans speculate that Blake and her husband, Ryan Reynolds, aim to get the Barbie and Oppenheimer effects, which aren't the same. With all these saddening events following the drama, fans have speculated that Blake plays Lily just like she portrayed Serena in Gossip Girl. But what's even crazier is that there was also a lot of drama on the set of Gossip Girl, which we will also revisit. Also, fans have started discovering that maybe Blake and Ryan aren't those sweet couple we want them to be, and that's just the tip of the iceberg because above all else, Blake has accused Justin Baldoni of something he did wrong on set. So the drama gets even crazier as we dig into all of these and more. Before it ends with us, Blake has always been a fan favorite, and now many fans have noted that there's something shady about the actress, similar to Jennifer Lopez's vibes. I don't dress like this in real life, but like I'm having to like do interviews and talk, so I'm gonna wear like a crazy pattern um, and really crazy rings. Um, rings also are like my comfort blanket. It's just a very expensive comfort blanket. I should like I should like yeah. snuggies instead as a comfort blanket. Instead, <laughs> I like Lorraine Schwartz, um, which is a problem. Blake being out of topic, talking on and on about unnecessary subject matters being carefree, and refusing to touch on the sensitivity of what's happening around her is why many fans are now relating her with J-Lo, who isn't new to receiving backlashes from being tone deaf. So Blake is entirely out of touch, and this isn't the first time. Blake has allegedly been problematic for a long time since her Gossip Girl era, which we've discussed on this channel in the past. There was a lot of drama between the leading cast of Gossip Girl Leighton Meester and Blake, and one of them has to do with the wardrobe on set. According to reports, Leighton had a budget increase for her wardrobe as Blair, allowing her to wear fancy dresses that Blake began to get jealous of. Blake was angry at this mainly because she was the most successful of the two outside of Gossip Girl and other film projects, so she didn't like that she wasn't consulted about the wardrobe issue. The funny thing is that the wardrobe Wardrobe is also an issue in It Ends With Us because Blake put it all together, but the fans aren't pleased with that because they feel it doesn't fully represent Lily. However, Baldoni has praised Blake saying, Something you might not know about
about Blake is that she's not just an actor. She's so much more than that. She's a creative powerhouse. She's a producer, she's a writer, um, she's a fashion designer. She touched so many aspects of this production and everything she touched, she made better. Even though the reply aims to show appreciation for Blake's efforts, many people think it's a shade to Blake for taking control of almost every part of the production. Blake also agreed not to be content with acting alone. Well, I'm not the type of actor who can um act without producing, you know, like I can't, you can't just put me in any clothes and give me any words and have me step in and transform. Also, during the premiere, Justin Baldoni mentioned, We do have it starts with us, so I'm hoping to see you back in the double duty role. I think the, uh, there are better people for that one. I think there are better people for that one. Justin. I think Blake Lively's ready to direct. That's what I think. All these remarks support the idea that something isn't right, which Blake has now reacted to. But before we get to that, it's no surprise that Baldoni allowed Blake to have a heavy influence on the direction of his project because he wants the movie to come from a female point of view due to the subject's sensitivity. However, Blake took it far by assigning the editor of Deadpool, Shane Reed, to create her cut of the movie, which allegedly became the official final cut for the film. And with all the backlash that has come with that, Blake has revealed what Baldoni did to her on set. According to a direct source to TMZ, Blake claimed Baldoni made her uncomfortable on set on many occasions, especially in one scene where Baldoni lifts Blake into the air. Baldoni has a history of back problems, and to be on the safer side before shooting this scene, he went to ask his on-set trainer how much Blake weighs and how he could train to protect himself from developing a back injury. But Blake wasn't happy with this approach that Baldoni took and has accused the actor and director of fat shaming her postpartum body after she had her fourth child with her husband in February 2023. This offended Blake and the irony is that a similar incident happened in 2016 with Blake as the agitator. So amid this drama, Norwegian journalist Kirsty Flaw, who once interviewed Blake and her co-star Parker Posey in 2016 for the movie Cafe Society, posted a video titled The Blake Lively interview that made me want to quit my job. In the video, the journalist congratulated Blake, who was pregnant with her second child, but the actress didn't take it well. First of all, congrats on your little bump. Uh, congrats on your little bump. <laughs> <laughs> what about my bump? <laughs> We've got two nice ones. Flaw revealed that that was the most uncomfortable interview experience she has ever had because she wasn't pregnant like Blake was, but the actress still went ahead to make a joke about her little bump as well. However, the interview only got worse when they started talking about the costumes in the film. Everyone wants to talk about the clothes, but I wonder if they would ask the men about the clothes. I would. And that answer sounded like Blake was trying to be a good feminist, but ended up putting another woman down and totally ignoring her. The entire interview continued with Blake shifting focus from the interviewer and conversing with Parker. Commenters on the YouTube page were shocked that Blake had always been like this, especially in interviews. So being hostile toward the interviewer and claiming Baldoni was fat shaming her because he was watching out for himself has made fans even angrier at the actress with many TikTok accounts speaking about it. But that's not the only thing Blake has accused Baldoni of. In the same report by TMZ, Blake was also uncomfortable while filming a kissing scene with Baldoni because the actor held on to the kiss longer than necessary. Also, so many cast and crew told TMZ that there's something off between Blake and Baldoni. They added that even though it looks like many of the crew and cast members, including the author Colleen Hoover, are on Team Blake. Some people worked on the film that is totally on Baldoni's side. As the drama intensifies, Baldoni has continued to focus on the movie's message by speaking about it in his interviews. Before all of these started, Baldoni acquired the rights to the book It Ends With Us in 2019 before bringing Blake on board. However, fans have expressed disappointment in how Lily is portrayed in the film 
and it's been alleged that Blake had never heard of Colleen Hoover until she was informed about the project. Also, after a sensitive movie like this ends, there's usually a hotline for people to use, but it's not available in the film. Fans believe it's because Blake's cut was used, and there's now a petition online to release Baldoni's version of the movie. During the writer's strike, Ryan Reynolds rewrote some dialogue without informing the screenwriter. The PR for It Ends With Us also took on a goofy side, with Ryan, his mother, and his friend Jackman making it a super hilarious event and romantic comedy rather than a sensitive issue. That has brought even more focus not just on Blake, but also on her marriage to Ryan. Before Ryan married Blake, he was engaged to Alanis Morissette in June 2004. Ryan and Alanis were together for two years before the engagement, which lasted for three years and they eventually broke up. Then he also started to date Scarlett Johansson privately for a year and Ryan proposed soon after and they married in 2008. Sadly enough, they separated in 2010 and finalized their divorce a year later. However, there was more involved in their divorce even though Scarlett cited other reasons. Before they separated, Ryan was on the set of Green Lantern where he met Blake. At the time, Blake was also in a relationship with Penn Badgley. So she broke up with Penn in 2010 and Ryan separated from his wife in 2010. Ryan and Blake started dating in 2011 and married a year later. There's an alleged trend in Hollywood where celebrities leave their partners for someone younger and Ryan, who's 47, is 11 years older than the 36-year-old Blake. He is also eight years older than Scarlett, who's now 39. Their union has been shady since they met and broke up with their lovers to be with each other. Then they broke the internet with their wedding venue, the Boone Hall Plantation. This historic site holds a sensitive remembrance of slavery and the torture the black race went through in the country. So Ryan and Blake's choice of location for their wedding shows their disregard for critical issues that affect people. The actress also once published a blog post that supported a pro-slavery agenda. However, the firework burned her dress at the wedding and Ryan told her she would never forget their wedding ceremony, just like the marks on her dress. Although they've since apologized for having a wedding on a plantation, more moments where they troll each other online, speak even more about how almost everything is a joke to the couple. There are many videos and articles of Ryan and Blake trolling each other online, which they take pride in as it reflects their comfort with each other in their marriage. In one of the trolling posts, Ryan mentioned he would save a piece of art that's very special to him in a fire first before coming for Blake. The trolling continued with It Ends With Us, where Ryan joked jokingly confronted Brandon, who plays his wife's love interest. Over the years, Ryan has been known to be a funny guy, which is very obvious in his film projects. The cast of If can also relate to his personality, and when asked if Ryan is a nice individual, most of them answered that he isn't, and Ryan agrees by calling himself an absolute monster. Although it all comes across as a joke, there could be some truths in it. Aside from her marriage, which has come under scrutiny with the these recent developments, fans have also been revisiting Blake's background and referring to her as a privileged Nepo baby. Blake's father, Ernie Lively, was an actor, and fans believe she has never really experienced any hardship, so it's hard for her to focus on complex subject matters. Also, she didn't want to be an actress, but was born into a situation where she had to be. According to Blake, Hollywood wasn't a big deal to her because it was her family's work and her brother Eric tricked her into auditioning for her first movie, The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Also, many actresses had issues with the convicted offender and former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein, who was accused of multiple charges of forceful relations, but Blake came out publicly to show him support, saying she had never had such an experience with him, and it's devastating to hear people say those stories. This indicates indicates that Blake is in a position of privilege and power where she doesn't see beyond her situation. Hollywood is a platform that's hard to break into, even for talented people. Still, people think it's terrible to have nepotism take over with actors and actresses who don't see the value in the opportunity and 
don't use their platform correctly. Speaking about platforms, Blake's version of the poster of It Ends With Us barely has Justin Baldoni on it despite being the director and lead actor. Even Brandon preferred rehearsing with a mirror than with Blake on set. However, following everything, Justin Baldoni has hired a PR crisis manager, Melissa Nathan, who worked for Johnny Depp on the Amber Heard trial and the drama continues. 